Hello friends, welcome to our virtual Henrico County Public Library. I'm Miss Jim from Tuckahoe. I sure miss seeing everybody. We are here today to talk about fairies, particularly flower fairies are my favorites. But you know there are fairies all over Virginia, really all over the world. We can tell that they have been here if you ever look out in the grass and you see a ring of toadstools or mushrooms. That's called a fairy ring and that's where fairies go and dance at night. I myself have spent a lot of time waiting around these fairy rings trying to see if I can find the fairies. It's a lot easier for younger children to see them than it is for me because you have such a better, better vision. I'm going to talk today a little bit about fairies and then a little bit about some things that you can do to try and bring more fairies to your home and to your yard, to your community, and places that we can go to see fairies. So first, let's see. I think we all know about fairies. They're very tiny. They have wings. They live in flowers for the most part. Um, probably you've, you are familiar with the story of Thumbelina. And the way it goes is once upon a time there was a, a, a woman who wanted very badly to have a child. And she hadn't had a child yet. So she went to the wise woman in her town and said, Please, I just want a baby. What, what can I do? And the wise woman gave her a little seed and said, take this home and plant it in your garden and give it lots of love and attention and just see what happens. And so the woman did that. She took it home and planted the seed and it sprouted and grew and the flower bud came. And when it opened, in tiny, inside it was a very tiny little baby girl. And it was no bigger than the woman's thumb. So she called her Thumbelina. And that was her baby. And they were very happy together. And Thumbelina loved being out in the garden and the flowers. But then one day, some toads came by and saw her and thought, Oh, what a beautiful little fairy. I think she would make a perfect wife for my son, who is also a toad. And so they kidnapped Thumbelina and took her away. And that was kind of scary for Thumbelina because she didn't want to marry a toad. So she was able to run away, and some fish, who helped her? All the little animals of the forest. Some fish helped her, some birds helped her, some butterflies. She got to the other side of the, the pond where the toads lived, and she lived in, the, in nature for a while, in the wilderness, because she didn't know where she was anymore. She made friends with the mice, she became friends with the moles. One of her best friends was a sparrow. And one day the sparrow said, won't you come with me? I'll take you back to the garden where I live. And you can live in the flowers there and I'll be up in the tree and you can visit me anytime. And so she went with the sparrow and he took her to this beautiful flower garden. And wouldn't, would you believe it? One of the flowers opened and there was another little person just her size. And he said, well, welcome to our garden. And then all the flowers opened and they all had little fairies in them. And he said, wouldn't you like to live here with us and be one of us? And she said, this is perfect. Everybody is just thumb-sized, just like me. And they gave her a pair of butterfly wings, and she lived there with them happily ever after. We are now going to talk about some things that we can do to get these fairies in our houses and in our yards. So one of the best things, you know, things that you need, you need a nice habitat, a nice house. Um, you need plenty of food and water and you need a, a, a feeling of comfort. So that's what we're going to be looking for. So one of the first things we're going to do is we're going to um, start making some furniture for our fairies. So when my children were little, one of our favorite things to do was to take a bucket or a bag with us when we went on nature walks. And we would pick up anything that we found that was really neat. Like, look at this. How neat is that? three acorns stuck together like that. I think that's really interesting. And of course, I always love heart-shaped rocks. Look at that, it's a heart. And here's a very special rock that a special friend made for me. Thank you, Anne. So, and well, here's one, let's see. Some mulch that just has a neat little indentation in it. Isn't that neat? So when you're getting ready to make your fairy house, if you're making a fairy house for outside, I suggest that you go around and see what you can find. Get pieces of bark like this 
and I've taken pieces of bark. Those make nice roofs. I've also made little tables out of them. And what you do for that, there are lots of, we have some great books about how to make these things. Um, you can find all kinds of directions at your library. But I glued a piece of wood down here. And then once it was dry, I glued four little legs. Now I used hot glue to do this. You could also use white glue. It just takes a little longer. If you're using hot glue, make sure your adult does it. And one important thing that you could do, it helps to get the legs all the same size. Maybe you could take a ruler and a marker and take a piece of a, a stick, a piece of wood, and mark on there the different, like maybe if you decide you're going to make all of your legs an inch and a quarter, you mark an inch and a quarter and an inch and a quarter. Or you could even add them up and mark an inch and a quarter and starting from that same place, your next in mark would be two and a half inches. You could do all kinds of fun math stuff doing this. Or you could just break them off the same size. So to make the chairs, I just love these cute little chairs. You're going to make a bunch of little twigs, break big twigs into little twigs, all the same size. Line them up to where it looks like a nice seat. And then you're going to glue two pieces, two other little sticks that are just slightly longer. They call it one stick length, one twig length longer than your seat. And once that has dried, you're going to flip it upside down and glue your front legs on and then have some longer legs and glue them in the triangle in the back. And then once that's dried, you can glue some twigs across the front to hold it all together. And what fairy would not want to come? And here's one. I've set the table. Look at this. I've got a little fairy fork. I hope you can see that. And acorns make great fairy bowls. And I've got a leaf for a tablecloth. And this is just all set for a fairy feast. And our fairies could have friends. There we go. Now we have two fairies. Now if you're not able to go outside and do all this, guess what? You could do it inside too. And there are other kinds of fairies that live inside, like pixies and brownies. You've heard the story of the elves and the shoemaker. When the shoemaker goes to bed, the elves come out and finish making his shoes for him. They need houses too. Be careful. Think about when you're making your houses what kind of fairies you want to attract. And you don't want to make them too big because you don't want to attract trolls or gorillas or anything like that. So keep them nice and fairy sized. But here's a little chair that I made just using a bottle cap. And I actually used a bookmark and cut it up and glued it on. And I glued the little legs on the inside and the back on the outside. And so it sits up just like that. Um, for my fairy house, this was a, a canister of oatmeal that we finished. It was delicious. I pulled off the label. So look at this. You could easily color this and decorate it because they really like pretty colorful things. I cut a door in it. You could cut some windows. And then I just used a piece of construction paper and cut it into a cone. And there's my roof. And now it is all set to welcome house fairies in. So let's go outside and see what we can find in the garden and what we can do to maybe make a fairy house. And remember that we have all kinds of great books about this at the library, including these that have just pictures of other fairy houses that, you, that other people have built, different ideas for things you can do. There are lovely stories about fairies. There are special craft books if you're making a fairy house. All kinds of fun things, all available at your library. So let's go outside and see what we can find. Okay, here we are outside. This is my yard. Let's see where we can find a good spot to build our fairy house. How about down here under this nice shrub? What do we see here? Oh, you know what? Somebody has already found it. Maybe there are already fairies here. Look at that. And maybe they have a little bluebird friend. 
and they're having a tomato for dinner. Wow. Doesn't that look like fairies could live there? So let's think about the things that we need for a fairy habitat. Now remember, one thing that I might have forgotten to mention, always make sure that when you're picking things up that they're safe to pick up. You don't want to cut things unless you have permission. And you don't want to um, hurt, pick anything that might hurt you. Be careful about mushrooms. Mushrooms can be poisonous. Remember, anything with three leaves might be poison ivy, so don't pick that. And flower, uh, fairies like flowers, but you want to be careful about picking any flowers. Make sure you have permission. Make sure that it's going to be a good flower for a fairy. So let's look at some things. Our, our fairy habitat, you know, fairies, we don't want any toads coming up and stealing our little thumbelinas. So we're going to make a nice habitat. We're going to give it a little shelter, a little security. I am starting out with some twigs that I have found. And I have my garden shears, which are very handy. Make sure you have a, a grown-up helping you out if you're using something like this. And make sure you have a grown-up's permission. Did I mention permission? Okay. And now, through the magic of video, you can see our fairy house can be as simple as that. We put some sticks here. They make nice camouflage so that no toads will come and get our thumbelina. I've got a nice little uh, path of some special rocks that I've collected um, leading up to our front door. We've got our chairs and table. You could make all kinds of fairy furniture. You could make a little ladder in case somebody wants to come and visit higher up. Everywhere you're going out now, look around and see if you can find a fairy house, and if you can't, find a place to build one. Thank you, friends, for joining me today.